I've finally recovered from the Friday night live stream, which went two and a half hours. I'm going to talk about that a little bit. This video is going to be about how you should approach other people's advice. And I'm going to connect it to music production, the music industry. You know, if you're going about as an artist, going about as an artist or as a producer or mixer engineer, um, that's going to be the topic that I'm going to dig into a little bit and go over it and how it relates to like things that I've experienced over the years and uh, other people that I know that have had their own experiences that we've discussed. Um, so that's what it's going to be. How should you approach other people's advice? What to do with that stuff? How to take it in? Just I'll give you some of my ideas, some of my experiences on how that's all gone down over the years. Um, just to rewind for a second, we had a great Friday night live stream. Um, I think this is the fourth one now in a row, and I'm doing one again this Friday, barring um, I kind of moved the session back a little bit to allow for the stream because um, it was so much fun and you know, people are really having a good time. Um, the live streams are on the YouTube channel, but I only leave them live from Friday night up to somewhere around Sunday usually, and then I just make them members only. And uh, so if you want to be a member, you got, I don't know how you do it on mobile, but um, from what I understand, you got to go to the, it's easier on the desktop. You go to the channel and there's a join thing. It's a dollar a month. Um, anyway, we have a good time. Some of the topics we covered were, uh, we kind of started off with too many sonic options. Like, well, how is that affecting your journey on making music and making productions? and um, Just kind of like the overload of thousands of synths and thousands of sounds and drum sounds and plugins and you know there's probably 20 DAWs to pick from there's every work surface we the the options are endless and it, we kind of discussed like is that too much probably probably pick up on that even some more in the next and next weeks because we kind of you know, the, there was one thing about a live stream is that it's sort of like a, it's very fluid. And, you know, as the chat is going and our, the chat had somewhere around 1500 chats. And I was like, it was like a blur for me to keep up with. So um, some of that came from a video that I watched of an interview with, of all people, Moby. And yes, that Moby, the guy who uh, was the rave... DJ kind of beat making guy from the 90s and uh, he's still a very active musician he's an activist he's an activist uh, for his whole um, vegetarian vegan life um, animal rights guy uh, so he was discussed we discussed the Bee Gees Yes, the Bee Gees. So I'm trying to give you an idea real quick that how much variety is on these Friday Night Lives, which are a lot of fun. And uh, then we, we kind of discussed the go-to vocalist, which um, I put out there. I kind of like to play around with that a little bit here and there with other friends where the concept is like you have, you're trying to, you, you have one you have to have a hit and you're allowed to pick one vocalist in their prime to provide you with that vocal to give you the hit spoiler alert my pick is don henley but there was there was dozens right maybe a dozen or two um from the chat that were like you know people were voicing their picks there were some unusual picks and then there were some of the the ones that you would expect 
Uh, but it's a fun thing to do. We'll probably do some more of those during the during the streams. Um, I trash John Legend as I am wont to do. That's a whole, you know, different thing. And someone asked me who I thought was the best. I don't remember what the exact question was. They might have asked me, like, who was the best beat maker or hip hop producer I ever worked with. And um, off the top of my head, I said Easy Mo B. So take that for what it's worth. It might be, you know, you might have your own. That, that would be expected. Um, so that, that kind of sums up the stream thing, the live stream there. I'm still going to do it at seven o'clock Friday night. Um, there is no exact length. Um, uh, it's kind of like the way it's been going is it's like when I run out of gas. So now we're going to come back to the, the title, how you should approach other people's advice. Um, it's a tricky area because there is a never ending supply of advice, including like, you know, this advice, if you want to look at it that way. Um, there is a never ending, you can, you can never run out of sources for, you know, how should I be doing something? What should I be doing? And it doesn't necessarily just mean music. And that's kind of where I can speak from is that like, you know, there were, there were definitely times where I took advice, not just in the music business that, you know, I look back on and say like, you know, was, that was probably not, probably not vetted quite enough. Maybe I should have really investigated that. So there's some of those things, there's some of the things that you can do, um, to, Think about these things. Um, think about, first of all, what's the source? You know, is the source someone or something that um, that you can that you can trust? You know, where are they where are they coming from? What's their success rate? What's their what's their motivation? in giving you advice or offering you advice. And some of this is not just advice. It's some of it's just like, Hey, uh, you know, you hear the concept of like, um, sort of like I'm modeling myself after such and such career, the career of so-and-so I hear, uh, some younger guys say that here and there when I talk to them, like, you know, that's like, as I'm going in the business, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be a young version of this guy. Um, I don't think that's a, a horrible concept, but there's, there's no way for you to know all the little nitty gritty details on what that person's influences were and, and what their decision-making process was like and what, what good decisions they made and what bad decisions they made. So, you know, I think you can, I look towards the idea of a what do you call that? An example or there's some, there's some word for describing, you know, it's someone that you're, you're kind of emulating, uh, a hero. Um, you could say that a lot of artists have looked at Bob Dylan as like someone that they emulated. It worked for some people. It was catastrophic for others who didn't make it because they were too Dylan-esque. Um, they copied Bob Dylan way too much. I'll give you on the hip hop tip. Um, did some guys try and copy Biggie too much? Um, I can think of one guy in particular who ran into some bad luck, uh, wrong place, wrong time. But when I first heard shine, and that was like literally in the control room when he was auditioning for the people I was in the room with. He just, he just sounded too much like Notorious B.I.G. And I don't know if he would admit that he was emulating him, 
or if it was just an unbelievable coincidence that he sounded and his his flow was quite a bit like him. So getting back to the uh, to the idea of l there, there's some people that have the, the opinion that you should have a lot of mentors and just take a little bit from each one. Um, have a lot of influences. Just take a little sprinkle from each one so that you can kind of create your own special sauce or whatever with with that kind of, that type of thing. Or there are the other people that think you should have a mentor. I am a, I'm not a big fan of the one mentor type of thing. I'm also really not particularly a fan of the mentor being in your lane, in, in, the, in the thing that you're doing. So in other words, like, say you want to be a, let's just say you want to be a hip hop producer. Should you have a hip hop, hip hop producer as a mentor? I don't think so. I think that those should be like little sprinklings of influence. Um, I think you might be better off with a mentor that's literally not in the music business. Someone who can give you perspective on different parts of life that you don't need to affect your, your music life. I saw, I've seen too many, I'll give you an example is like, I've seen too many guitar players who their, their instructor became their mentor. And that instructor or yeah, teacher, instructor, indoctrinated them so much into their way of playing and their way of learning the instrument and learning music that it, be it becomes sort of like an impossible task because just think about it. If the instructor, let's just call it the guitar teacher, if the guitar teacher has been playing for 25 years and he takes on a student who's 14, um, how long is that student expected to study what this guy knows before he gets the blessing um, that he's ready to get out there and be his own guy, be his own player? I'm using he just because it's easier for me. But... I, I've seen that happen a lot where like really good guys who were good players without even being in a program, so to speak, um, became not so good players because they got too heavy into learning from one person for an extended period of time. And then you, you, can, you can get into the debate of like, does the teacher ever really want the student to pass them up. There is, there's always that, that debatable situation when you could say, does the, does the vocal coach really want the singer to get, to have more success than they did? Even if the vocal coach supposedly has no interest in being a star anymore, or, you know, having a music career is a very tricky spot. That's where the advice thing comes into play, where, you know, you have, like, say, in, in this case, the vocal coach, who's giving advice to the singer and paralyzing the singer in every possible way because they're sort of, like, living vicariously through them and putting all their, is it damage or is it, um, you know, all their issues on the student. So this student might be 
the most natural singer with a gift um, of singing free and easy, like a Shelby Lynn or a, you know, a Mary J. Blige or, I mean, or, you know, even a, even a rapper or an MC. And the, the mentor, by only knowing their way, will kind of instill their whole thing on the artist. I'm referring to him as an artist, or the, the student as an artist. So that kind of covers the, like, you know, consider the source kind of thing. Then you have to get into the idea of friends and peers and influencers um, taking advice or pulling in the advice of too many people or not an, or, or 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 should you be in that that narrow lane of just listening to one it's i don't think there's any one way to do it just as i don't think there's any one way to make a record or any one way to record or any one way to make a beat. I think that you find your way. You have to develop your thing, taking in influence, of course, um, and then uh, tossing away ideas uh, that you try and test out. You know, you hear about one, the workflow of one producer and you give that a spin, you know, you say like, oh, I found out that this is the way so-and-so cuts vocals. This is the way they like to piece together a vocal track. They like to do all the verses first and then do all the hooks. They like, another person likes to build the song from the beginning to end. I know other producers that like to do the hook first get those in place and do the verses so that they can have a feel for like how they're building up into the chorus. So it takes a lot of experimenting and a lot of sifting through all this advice and anything that you look at or read or listen to is advice. How should you approach it? I'm actually sticking somewhat to the topic as mu as best as I can. Um, it's a there's a lot of variations on the theme and things that you can try, things that you can think about. So continuing, another concept is that you you got you have to be able to listen to your inst intuition, listen to your instincts, listen to your gut. You'll know when you are taking in someone's advice at a certain point, you'll know internally, like, hey, you know what? Uh, this isn't for me. Even though I'm trying to talk myself into it, even though this, I've, I've been told this was the way uh, you know, find a, find a mentor and just, you know, go all in. Some people will tell you that, uh, that could be right for you in some ways, but you, you have to find out and you have to use your gut, um, and make that move when it's, when it's time, you know, go all in or get out so that you can find some other some other influences, some, some other advice. It's not an easy thing to do. Um, the other thing is, you know, you, you want to appreciate good advice. There's, there's good advice out there. There's, there's, there's good info out there. Um, don't, I wouldn't recommend being closed minded, just like I wouldn't recommend being closed minded to, to new things. I'll give you a, for an example. I'm getting into, you know, I've obviously started a channel. I'm doing videos. This is all new for me. 
um, even though I started a, a while back, this is a, to make it a regular thing is somewhat new to me. And also the live stream is a new thing and I'm trying to find different ways of doing it. Now it's going to evolve just like my recording process has evolved. My mixing process has evolved. I try new things. I'm always open to new technology, um, mixing the old with the new. I don't, I, I can't, I'm not going to be making the same record I made five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 or 25 years ago. I'm not going to do that. I, why would I to not evolve? So this is, this is kind of one of those things where you like, you know, as far as trusting your instinct, you know, you want to be able to, and you want to be, have some freedom to try things that may work for you. Uh, digital may work for you. Um, digital audio workstations may work for you. They might not. Maybe you're, maybe you're better off on a, a standalone so that you're not using a computer. Getting back to the, to the, um, streaming thing and all that stuff. Like I'm going to try a USB microphone this week. I've never tried a USB microphone for anything serious, but I've done some research. I took advice from a bunch of different video guys that I watched and kind of sifted through it. And then I kind of like used a little bit of my own experience and what I'm winding up with for my first attempt at using a USB microphone is a tried and true brand. It's because I've used that brand before. Um, I think I've kind of covered a lot of, or a good part of what I wanted to get into. I think, I, you know, ask questions from your, of your mentors, like pick their brains. I always had a good time on sessions picking the brain of another engineer, picking the brain of another producer, picking the brain of a, of a musician. Cause you can, you can find out a lot from the musicians, like how they're feeling about where the microphone is, you know, the vocalists, you know, Hey, how, how does that head, how does that, does that set of headphones feel? You know, you, you want to ask questions to find out more things it's sometimes better to ask questions about things that aren't specifically going to result in advice. If you're, if you get my drift on, like, be careful of too much advice. It can paralyze you by analysis, you know, par paralysis by analysis thing. You got this, you have this echo chamber going on with someone telling you something over and over again of the that you should be doing this, you should be doing that, you should be doing this. And uh, there's no other way. You're an idiot if you do it any other way. It's not necessarily true. And there's no way that anybody's going to be making records like we're making them right now, five years from now. So if you're a young guy or a girl um, and you're making records or you're, you're working on production right now, you shouldn't be digging in on like digging in your heels and saying like, well, this is how I make records. Cause that, that is not going to be the case. When I was making records in 1997, it, it, there is nothing that hasn't changed. Everything has changed and it's always been changing. Of course, people are going to romanticize about where they came from. But like I said, do you want to make the same record over and over again or do you want to evolve?